Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you guys a tutorial on how to create this warm golden look from the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. I wanted to show you guys what my go-to look is using this palette since this is my giveaway palette that I will be giving away to one lucky subscriber once I hit 100 subscribers. We are almost halfway there, so just if you haven't subscribed already, keep on subscribing. Once I hit 100 subscribers, I will be doing a Google Docs giveaway, and as long as you're subscribed, you can enter to win. So you have a really good chance of winning one in 100. I mean, those odds are pretty good. So. Let's get to 100 subscribers so someone can win this beautiful palette. With that being said, I just really wanted to show you guys how beautiful this palette is in action. I had talked about it in my favorites video and I just kind of showed it to you guys, but it doesn't really show you how beautiful it is when you use it. You can create a subdued look using these real natural colors or you can go more bold and warm with the berries and the oranges. I used love letter which is this hot pink i use venetian red which is a little pinky red shade i use burnt orange as my transition and then primavera as my um lid color which is a beautiful like foiled gold shade especially if you spritz it with some fix plus or even just wet it with water i love gold on the lid i think that I use gold on the lid for most of my looks on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I did Vermeer in my inner corner. So I use a lot of shades in this palette and I still haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg with it. It has so many different variations. So I probably will do another like more daytime look with this because this is really bold. And then I did use the brush that comes with this palette. It is a wonderful brush. Normally when brushes come in a palette, I never use them. I throw them out. But this has a beautiful blending brush and then a shader brush on the other side. And I used it for almost every shade. So you guys can see how beneficial it is um, to have the brush in the palette as well. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys. So please stay tuned to see the full tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe again. I know I sound like a broken record and give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and I will see you in just a second. Thanks so much. Hello, hello. Okay, so I am priming the face using the Makeup Forever Hydrating Primer. This is my favorite primer of all time. I use it on a daily basis and I rub it all over the face until it is nice and hydrated and tacky and then I go in with my foundation. I'm using the Milani 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. It's the Conceal and Perfect, and I use shade number six. This is by far my favorite foundation. I get it at the drugstore. It is very cheap. I have it in several different shades for when I'm self-tanning or when I'm a little lighter, and I can't say enough good things about this. It blends perfectly. I have heard that with oily skin, it may not be the best fit, but I have dry skin, so I, I don't know for sure. I know with my drier to normal skin, it is fabulous, and I just can't say enough nice things about it. It is my go-to foundation above every foundation that I have or that I've tried. I love it. Then I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser. I like putting this right in the hollows of my eyes just to cover those dark circles. I have bad dark circles because I don't drink enough water, which is very bad, but I just blend that in with a damp beauty blender and it really does help conceal those dark circles. And then I go in with my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer in the shade Light Neutral. And I'm going to highlight my face using this, as I always do with triangles under the eyes, the forehead, bridge of the nose, Cupid's bow, and chin. And blend all of that out seamlessly with the Beauty Blender. This Beauty Blender actually was a VIB Rouge uh, special, two for 28, when one is 20, so two would typically be $40. So look into that. It's from Sephora. If you're a Rouge member, it's a really great deal. And just keep blending all of that out until it is nice and highlighted as you would like it. And then I'm going in with my RCMA No Color Powder and I'm just taking it on the tip of my beauty blender and pressing it into the under eye so that 
it does not crease. The concealer does not crease under my under eye. And now I'm going in with my favorite product other than the eyeshadow palette. This is the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops. And I have the shade Sunlight, which is my favorite shade. These drops are so beautiful. They come across really, really intense when you swatch them. But once you get them on the cheek and blend it out as I'm doing, you'll see it just makes your cheeks have a really natural glow. So I just put it on my cheekbones and blend it out and then I do like a little C shape up around the eyebrow and I just love the way it sets the tone for the rest of my highlights because you know I can't use just one so I start out with that and you always want to do a liquid first so I put that liquid on and then I will go in with one or two more powder highlights I'm going to start out with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Lights, and I'm going to set that liquid highlight with this powder, and then I'm going to also highlight the other places where I concealed, so the tip of my nose, my cupid's bow, my chin, go a little crazy on the chin, and then the forehead, and that's just going to add some extra dewiness to the skin, and then I'm going to go in with a little bit more of an intense highlight just on the cheeks and I'm going to use the Laura Geller Gilded Honey Highlight to do this. This is one of my favorite highlighters of all time. Beautiful, intense, golden, but not too golden. Just, I feel like this is the perfect shade for any skin tone from fair to really dark. It is so beautiful. And it just, with the triple effect with three highlighters, I mean, you're beaming. You're beaming to the heavens. And now I'm going to go in with my Hoola bronzer from my Cheekathon palette. And I'm going to use my e.l.f. blending brush and blend that in to contour with. This e.l.f. brush is my favorite little brush. It's so cute and chubby. And I love it. It is like $4 at Walmart. So if you see it, pick it up. You can use it for so many different things. And it is a fabulous brush. So I'm just contouring my cheeks and my forehead. And then I'm going in with my Lorac Tantalizer Bronzer. And I am taking my MAC 135 brush, I believe it is. This is my favorite bronzing brush. And I am warming up the cheeks with this and the forehead just to make my skin a little bit more summery. I love a good bronze and a good highlight in the summer. I love it all year round, but specifically in the summer. Now I'm picking up my Jaclyn Hill and Becca face palette, and I'm going to take the blush Rose Spritz, and I'm going to blush up my cheeks. I start on the apple of the cheeks and then just take it back toward the ear in between the highlight and the contour. And then I'm spraying my face to get all those powders to be cohesive with MAC Fix Plus. Then I'm going to... I'm priming my eyes with the MAC Painterly Paint Pot, and then I'm going in with the star of the show, the Modern Renaissance Palette. I am starting out my transition with the shade Burnt Orange, and I am using the brush that comes in the palette, using the fluffy side to fluff out that transition color in the upper crease using Hula Hoop and Windshield Wiper Motions. Just buff it in until you have your desired blown out look. If you don't want it too blown out, you don't have to, but I am winging it out there at the end of the eye, just so it has a little bit of a winged shape for the winged liner we will put on later. And then I decided to put some RCMA No Color Powder under my eye just to catch any fallout that may occur. And now I'm going in with that same side of that brush and I'm taking the shade Venetian Red. It is a beautiful, reddish pink shade and I am going in just a little lower than the burnt orange in the crease still winging it out and doing the windshield wiper and hula hoop motions and it's just another transition shade going lower onto the lid and then I'm taking the burnt orange and that same side of that brush and I'm just going on my lower lash line with that now I am taking the shade Love Letter. This is more of a pink shade. Pretty hot pink in my opinion. It's not like super Barbie hot pink, but it is a beautiful like raspberry hot pink. And I'm keeping that more on the outer corner of the eye. So I'm just adding dimension to that outer corner 
into that wing and a little bit into the crease, but not too, too much. And then I'm going to take the shade and put it on the lower lash line. So I'm taking that shade Love Letter and I am smoking out that lower lash line using Love Letter on top of Burnt Orange. And with that, I'm using the shader side of the brush because I want it to be a little bit more precise. I didn't want the pinkish red to go too far down on my lower lash line. And then I'm going into the warm brown shade in the palette called Cypress Umber. And I'm taking it just a smidgen on my brush and putting it on the outer V just to deepen it up. And then I'm going to go back over that exact same spot with Love Letter because I don't want it to be brown. I just wanted to add dimension. So this is going to make the pink show back up. Now I'm taking my MAC 242 shader brush and I'm going to pick up my favorite shade in this palette, which is Prima Vivera. This is a nice gold, like a light gold shade. And I spritzed it with Fix Plus to make it super intense and look like a foiled eyeshadow. I love this shade. It's so beautiful. I feel like it's just like my ideal uh, shadow for the lid. It's so, so, so pretty. So I'm just getting that all over the lid and kind of flicking it out towards where we did our outer V with the darker colors. And then I'm going to go back in with my fluffy brush and love letter. And I'm going to do the same thing so that it's a nice transition from the deeper tones to the gold. And it's not just like a stark stop and start situation. Now I'm wiping away all of that no color powder and wiping away any of the fallout that comes with that. This is a great way to clean up if you do your eyeshadow after your face makeup. Now I'm taking the color Vermeer, which is like a nice, pretty, shimmery pinkish, pale pinkish color, and I'm going to highlight my inner corner with that. And then I'm taking Tempera, or Tempera, and I am just going to highlight my brow bone with that. It is a beautiful non-shimmery white shade. I am going to wing my eyeliner out using the Kat Von D tattoo liner. I did it off camera. I was struggling trying to do it on camera, so I apologize for that. I will get better at doing wing liner on camera, but I have to be close to my mirror, so it is hard. Now I am putting a coat of mascara on my upper and lower lashes using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara, which is my favorite mascara at the moment. I'm focusing on my lower lashes because we are putting falsies on. And again, I do that off camera. So I popped on my House of Lashes Iconics and I am now using my Modster eyeliner to line the waterline. That is by Ardency In. And then I'm going in with my lip color, which is Anastasia of Beverly Hills Soft Lilac. I thought this would go very well with the eyes that we did. This liquid lipstick is a great formula. It's super easy to put on. I would recommend just putting one coat on and not layering it because it can get really dry if you do that. Most liquid lipsticks do. But if you stick to one coat, you're good to go. And then I'm going to put Jouer Skinny Dip Lip Topper on top of that and blend it out with my finger. Because of I the gold Primavera shade, I thought it looked really well with it. And that is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Mwah!